my name is Tan Wangeni and you are watching Understanding the Kingdom. So it is a mandatory mindset for proper interpretation and application of scripture. I love it when King Jesus showed up, he, he began to preach it, and then he's concluding, and he's telling us, this gospel that I've been preaching, this gospel of the kingdom, this is the gospel I want you guys to go preach. And on this program, that's the gospel you're going to hear. The gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached to all the world is a witness to the nations before the end comes. And I love it because this is not some theological idea that was inserted. No, these are the very words of Christ. This is, these are the very words of the king of this kingdom. Watch this. You, 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 we've got to develop the, the, the mindset of a king. Of the kingdom why because number two the kingdom concept is the main theme throughout scripture and gives us the foundation for understanding the purposes the plans the promises and the actions of god do you know how many people who are in the kingdom they don't know purpose they don't know their purpose they don't know even know the the purposes for which they were brought into the kingdom they don't know the plans of god for their lives because their mindsets are over here in religion. But to properly understand and interpret and translate the purposes of God for your life, for my life, must be based on the kingdom idea or the kingdom concept. We will look into this in uh, other messages, how... God did not establish a religion. God established a kingdom. That is why when Jesus came and began to preach the kingdom, the religious folk rose against him. In fact, the, those religious folk are the people that actually <laughs> took him in and said, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> they wouldn't do it themselves. They had somebody else do the dirty work. But anyway, that's another message altogether. And, and so to, pro to properly interpret and then to properly apply the scriptures, you've got to understand that the central theme of the entire scripture is all about kingdom. It's all about, it's all about kingdom. A, a, a kingdom, when you talk about kingdom, like my wife said, it, it's all about the rule over territory. <laughs> Love it. In the beginning, we look at it in a minute. In the beginning, God created heaven so that he can rule there. Then he created earth so that we can rule here. Because the heavens is his, but the earth he has given to the sons of men for us to rule here. And that theme is, is consistent and constant through scripture. That God, in fact, if you understand Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, the mindset of God, the purposes of God, why you were created, why I was created, why we have an earth here, why we have an heaven, an heaven there, what were our purposes, you will find it in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. Kingdom is about rule. It's about rule over territory. What are you ruling? Kingdom is not about membership. Kingdom is about citizenship. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Kingdom is about citizenship. I, I remember when we moved here, I had to understand I'm in the United Kingdom. Uh, I had to understand how to operate in the United Kingdom. I, uh, when I acquired 
the United Kingdom citizenship. I had to know my rights as a, as a citizen, a British citizen, know what I'm entitled, what I'm entitled to, what I can do, what I can't do. When I came here, I had to learn how to conduct myself in this kingdom. But many who are in the kingdom of God have yet to understand and to realize how to conduct themselves so, so, they can, so, that, so that they can get the privileges, they can get the rights of citizenship in the kingdom of God. And I pray to the Almighty God that this word will come and, and insert some faith in you so that you can rise up from being a child of God to being a son of God who knows and understands the rights of a citizen. John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, He came unto his own. Jesus came unto what he created. And his and creation did not recognize him. They received him not. But to as many as received him, he gave them the right. You have rights as a citizen. Give them the right to become. Woo. This will preach. There is, there is an opportunity for every child of the Most High God to become something, to become the sons of God. 20, 30 years you're still in the kingdom. Uh, I have come to understand that growing old is not optional. Growing up is optional. You can grow old, but growing up as a son who understands citizenship, the rights of a citizen, that is optional. It takes you and I to search out what our rights are as kingdom citizens. So kingdom is about citizenship. Kingdom is not about religion. Religion has members. That is why, uh, you know, there is so much talk about seating capacity and how many are following you, how many are in congregations. God is not about membership. God is about citizenship. God is about uh, uh, people who have an understanding of their capacity. For Jesus speaks about a, a ruler who made a feast for three people. Three people. People who understood and who had capacity. Of course, they all gave excuses, you know. Got oxen, got a wife, all those things. The ruler then says, go and invite all those religious people, all the highways and the byways. And they, 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 they filled a feast that was meant for three people. They filled thousands. It's not about membership. It's about rulership. It's about understanding citizenship. It's about uh, walking in and exercising occupation. Jesus said it, occupy. Be an occupation of force. Be one in authority. Until I come, occupy. This is your rule. This is your place to rule. That is why there is, there is such a difference between religion and kingdom. And religion, Jesus did not join religion. When he came, he didn't join the Sanhedrin. Nor did he become a sad, you see, sad, you see, or far, you see. No, he preached the kingdom because he knew where he was from. He knew where he was going. He knew the message that he brought and the redemption he had brought. And that is why religious folk were against him. He was talking about exercising rule. And what do you mean exercising rule? The, 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 the clergy are the ones that, that are in authority here. You know, the St. Henry and the, the high priest. So this is going to run, this is going to run again as a religious thought. I'm telling you, this is going to run 
cross against what religious people have built over years. But Christ introduces the message of the kingdom. An understanding of this message, the message of the kingdom, is going to be vital for us to manifest the king of that kingdom and manifest the glory of that kingdom and manifest the power of that kingdom. It is when we have the mindset of the kingdom. Isn't it amazing that Christianity is, is termed as a religion? If you look at your passport, if you look at your ID, you ask, what is your religion? Put Christianity. We say, Christian. We identify with the, with, the, with the religion. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But what I'm saying is this. <laughs> Do you even know where the, what Christian came from? A Christian was, was a definition by people over in Antioch. When they saw the disciples and they saw them doing things that Christ was doing, they first called these people Christians first at Antioch. They allowed, watch this, they allowed the world to define who they are. Oh, don't get me going. They allowed others to describe them, to define them, and therefore confine them. I wish those believers in Antioch would have stood up and said, No, we are not Christians. We are not, we are not letting the world define us. We are citizens of the kingdom. God, that's who we are, and Jesus, not only is he our high priest, but he's our brother. He is not ashamed to call us brothers. We are sons of the king, and we are brothers with the king, and we are citizens of a, of, of, of a kingdom called the kingdom of God. How I pray that would have been their response to defy the definition that the world defined them with. Because that theme has carried out throughout history. That the world defines the church and the world confines the church on what the church can and cannot do. What the church can or, can or cannot say. We live in a day when you cannot call sin, sin, according to scripture. Because you're branded something. You're taken to, uh, to, uh, to court because you, you called sin, sin. And, and you allowed the world to define what you can say and what you cannot say, what you can do and what you can do. And I said to you today, it is time for every child of God, every citizen of this kingdom to rise up and say what the word of God says is what we're going to say. If we perish, we perish. But the word of God is what we're going to preach this gospel of the kingdom. When he calls sin, sin, we're going to call sin, sin. When you call something righteous, we call, we're going to call it righteous. It doesn't matter what the world defines it as. It doesn't matter what the world says it is. Because we are cutting off from the, those Antioch definitions that they call the believers Christians. Who give them the right to define you? Who give them the right uh, to tell you what you can or you cannot do? You are not of this world. You are not of the cosmos. The government and the, the, the ruler of that government, you're not of it. We are in this world, but we are not of it and we are not to be defined. Nor are we to be confined by this world.